So if we look at the college curriculum under hematology, it has four areas, anemia, leukemia, and lymphoma, which we're going to cover elsewhere, and then coagulation, including platelet disorders, inherited and acquired coagulation disorders, and thrombophilia. So let's imagine here's a platelet. It's a sort of flat oval disc, and it has a number of granules in it. These are referred to as alpha granules and dense granules. The alpha granules here are shown in a sort of orange color and the dense granules in a green. Now they contain a wide range of different chemicals that are important in communication between cells, but we're really going to be focusing on two of those chemicals, ADP, and thromboxane A2. So platelets circulate around in the bloodstream, tending to move around towards the outer part of the stream, close to the endothelium. Then if there's an injury that takes place that exposes collagen, the platelet starts to activate. The first thing that happens is that you get a conformational change with the platelet. It moves from being a disc to putting out pseudopodia and achieving an extended shape. And at around the same time, the granules start to move towards the surface of the cell and release their contents into the surrounding area. If we look at platelet disorders, a number of conditions can cause decreased production. Of course, aplastic anemia or anything that infiltrates the bone marrow or suppresses it, chemotherapy agents, for example. In addition, things that destroy the platelets, particularly immunological mechanisms. For example, there are a number of collagen vascular diseases like SLE, which can lead to the destruction of platelets immunologically. And heparin causes a condition known as heparin-induced thrombocytopenia, which has an immunological basis. Patients can develop antibodies against platelets as a result of heparin therapy. By way of definition, a hemoglobin less than 135 grams per litre we used to refer that to that as 13.5 grams per deciliter for men, or 115 for women, which used to be 11.5 grams per deciliter. Those are the thresholds below which we refer to it as anemia. So what types of anemia are there? Well, we classify anemia largely by the size of the red cells. So there's microcytic, normocytic, and macrocytic, depending upon whether they're small, normal, or large. But then we also have hemolytic anemia, which we'll come to later.